sons and daughters of God. Simply because he disobeyed God and was alienated from God and alienated from him forever. Man, on the other hand, is a little different because God has made provision in which he can have eternal life through Christ Jesus. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that Jesus that came and gave his life and made that connection whereas when we were alienated from him, doomed for destruction, God so loved us that he provided to us a means in which we could be connected back to him. But I want you to know today that Satan wants to destroy you. Satan doesn't want you to be connected with God. Satan is coming from every angle trying to keep you. I know sometimes along this Christian way we get this courage. Sometimes people tell us that, that, that one of the hardest things for them to get to the point of understanding that they have a walk with God, they have a fear that they're going to be disconnected. They cannot live holy and they cannot live righteous. But I know along the way we want to get this covered sometimes. We want to get this funded. Even so many times people have conveyed to us and telling us that we just cannot live right. Telling us we cannot live holy. Telling us that in this world you are going to be separated from God. You want to sin because sin separates us from God. But I want you to know that although that you may sin sometimes, God is a forgiving God. He will forgive us. And then when we are not willfully sinning, but we got to have a mind to live right. Brother Paul declared unto us and said, let this mind be in us that is in Christ Jesus. We got to have a mind. Our mind got to have, be right to live right for God. Paul began to say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Come on, say a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him to live this holy life. You got to make a sacrifice. It is not something that just happens every day. It is not something that, 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 that just comes about, but you got to put forth an effort to live holy. You got to be able to resist temptation. Temptation is going to come, but one thing about it, to be tempted is not a sin, but to yield to the temptation is a sin. But I know that that, that, that sin I'm trying to bring about so many avenues and so many sources in which to destroy us. But I want you to say, as Brother Paul is saying here today, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. See, Brother Paul had problems with the churches in which he was pastoring simply because many of them had started out with Jesus and, and had taken a hold to the gospel plow, but somewhere along the line they were backsliding, they were going back into the world. And that is one thing that happens to so many church people today. They come and accept Christ, but then they all fire for him just for a little while and then they'll fire burn out and they go back into the world. The devil persuade them to give up, to throw in the towel, to get despondent, to get disgusted. So therefore, my brother Paul was saying, why would you go back into the world where Christ has set you free from the yoke of sin, from the burden of sin? Sometimes people feel that sin is a pleasure, that sin is a, it, it is a thing that is going on, going against the will of God. But the Bible declares unto us that sin only lasts for a season. And that season that it lasts so many times, it gets us in so many trouble. Until we can't get out. You don't believe me? Go to the jailhouses and we can find people that are in the jailhouses simply because uh, uh, they have sinned. They have broken the law. When Brother Paul began to talk to us in the book of Romans, in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, said, we was under the law once, but to what the law could not do. We were at the point when we desired to do good. Evil was always present. And when evil was present, we did those things that we would not want to do. Simply because we could not help ourselves. We could not, we did not have control of ourselves. But Brother Paul introduced us to a new spirit. And that is the spirit of God. He said, but there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who 
are walking not after the flesh, but walking after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life. And Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. Wherever the law of sin had me bound and had me under bondage to the point that I could not do what I wanted to do, not the will of God. But God has made it possible through his son Jesus. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody that is saved, know that Christ has made a difference in your life. Well, Paul said, any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And that is what we look at today. We want something that is new. We want a new life. We want a new walk with the Lord. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of doing the things that I want to do. Sometimes people that are walking in sin, they find themselves, they don't want to be in sin simply because sin has them burdened down. They don't want to be strung out on drugs. They don't want to be drug addicts. They don't want to be alcoholics. They don't want to be liars. They don't want to do those things that are contrary to the will of God. But the answer today is Jesus Christ. Somebody tell them, well, thank you. Sometimes we must come to the point of realizing that, that for Christ I live. And for Christ I die. Brother Paul is trying to convey a message unto them here in the word of the Lord and telling them, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And he began to write to the church of Galatia and telling them that you got to be steadfast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And then he challenged them and asked them a question. You didn't run away. But what did it hinder you? Something has hindered you, has come in your way to hinder you from going forth in the law. Something has come to the point that you have gotten discouraged. Something has come to the point of taking place. You have been weakened down to the point that you want to go back. You want to give up. And as we begin to analyze these things, I begin to look at us today and begin to ask the question, what did hinder us? Sometimes we can give that answer to us simply because we have some friends that have hindered us. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes friends that you think that are friends, they can get you discouraged. They can get you despondent. Sometimes you're associated. And sometimes even in the church, friends can get you discouraged and telling you not to do what God said you to do because the devil is whispering in their heels and telling them not to do it again. They want to influence you not to do it. And sometimes we get to the point that the friend and you are out of the church. To the point that we have lost the connection with God. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Not only this friend that Brother Paul began to look at it as we look at it today, but family members also get us to the point that discourage us. Sometimes when your family members cannot understand how is it that you oh my God have a close walk with God and God is blessing you. Because you pay your tithe, because you give to the Lord what is due unto Him, because you sacrifice, because you stay in the Word of the Lord, because you go to church on Sunday. Oh, why you stay in Bible study, study the Word of God, and they find out that you are progressing and going forth, and they say that what you are doing doesn't make any sense. Spending all your time in the Lord. They want to tell you to go out and have some fun, go out and do this, and go out and do those things that are ungodly, but you got to realize that I will let nothing separate me from God. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Sometimes they're not going to live right and don't want you to live right. But the Lord began to ask us the question and challenge us to the point of saying we love mother and fathers, sisters and brothers and families more than we love him, then we cannot be his disciples. Sometimes even lovers. Boyfriends and girlfriends can affect us and cause us to be separated from God. Young ladies have left the church because they saw that young man that was tall and what they call handsome out there because he flattered them with great words and told them how beautiful they were and how that he could take care of them and all of the things that he would do for them just like the devil told Jesus if you fall down and wish you me. We find us sometimes we are leaving the church simply because we are going after a man, men going after women, men going after men, and women going after women. I'm preaching in the Lord's house here today. But we must understand that we must endure it. No matter what a man has to offer us, no matter what a woman has to offer us, it is not as great as what God has to offer us. We must come to the point that our souls are the most important thing that we could ever have. More important than a house that we could live in, a car that we could drive, a husband or wife in which we can enjoy. But we must understand that the pleasure.
is only for a season, but all of the things that we do for Christ is going to last. We come to the point of finding ourselves that disobedience will separate us from God. That's what separated Adam and Eve from God, simply because they disobeyed the commandment of God. God helped them to the commitment in which they have made unto him. And we find that when God began to tell Adam and let Adam know that the only sin that he could commit was to eat of the forbidden fruit. And Adam went and did that. But I want us to understand that God is calling us to a higher level. There are sins of omission. There are sins of commission. But we want to read our Bible and study our Bible that we may stay connected with God. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Sometimes we get to the point that we have a love for this world. The affairs of this world. But we must understand that the Bible declares unto us that the love of the world is an enemy to God. And we don't want anything to separate us from God. Sometimes there are things we go after self-gratitude to satisfy ourselves. We want what we want. We feel that we are grown and that we have reached an age whereas we can do anything that we want to do. But when we get to that particular point, we are separated from God. And sometimes we are drifting, come on, say drifting, away from God. Drifting is a process of going without knowing. Before we realize that we have drifted away, drifted away from the love of God. And we don't have a love like we used to have. We don't have a love for church like we used to have. We don't have a desire to pray God like we used to. Am I talking in the house? We don't have a desire to come to church like we used to. Now we are entertained by other things rather than by the love of God reaching for self-gratification. Then we come to the point that things get to the point that they excite us because we see others that have things and we want those Things, but I hear the word of the Lord say first she keep the kingdom of God in his righteousness and then all of these things shall be added unto us but we are seeking the things rather than seeking God and it has separated us from God so therefore when we come to the point of crying out to God asking the Lord to come to our rescue to heal us, to deliver us Lord to bless us God is not blessing us simply because our sin and our iniquity have separated us from him. There are people in the world that are desiring fame and they're going after fame and fame that make them famous simply because they feel that fame being famous in the world is more important than being famous with God. They're going after their fortune. They're doing everything that are ungodly in order to reach a goal, a monetary goal in life. But I want you to know today that money is not everything. Your soul should be more important than your money. Simply because we are getting to the point that our jobs now are more important than God. I ask people sometimes about their salvation and their relationship with God and spending time with God and look like they're so eager to tell me that they are working now. But I want you to know that work, no matter how much you work, work is not going to replace your relationship with God. It can only separate you from God. I'm not saying for you not to work. God intended for you to work. But one thing about it, he did not intend for anything to come before him. Because God realized that he is God and he doesn't want anything to have his glory. He wants his glory to be given unto him and him only. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. We get so excited because we want to be excited. We want to keep up with the Joneses. We want to do what our neighbors are doing. That's what happened. 